For me, the entry point for artificial intelligence is, is movies. And I'm wondering if, if you think that there's a, there's a film out there that's got artificial intelligence right. Most AI movies, uh, futurist movies, uh, show one AI that's fighting for domination against the humans, or it's one or two groups of humans fighting for control of the AI. The war against the machines. I would recommend that we put the unit back in operation and let it fail. Her was actually a pretty good depiction because it wasn't one AI. Everybody had an AI, and that's what we see in the world today. You're dating a computer? She's not just a computer. You always There's not one or two AIs. There's one or two billion. Every smartphone is an AI, and it's connected to the cloud, which can multiply its capabilities thousands or millions fold. Her is showing you what these devices will evolve into. They will be at human levels, we'll have relationships with them. Samantha was Theodore's uh, assistant and helped him with information and his schedule, but it was also his companion. I've never loved anyone the way I love you. Me too. That was a fairly realistic depiction, and the, the uh, screenwriter and director said they based the movie on my ideas. Within 15 years, he predicts all cars will be self-driving. Virtual reality will seem 100% real. More mind-boggling, by the 2030s, he predicts leaps in nanotechnologies. Microscopically small robots will eradicate all diseases. Both biotechnology, which is reprogramming the information processes underlying biology, and nanotechnology, these medical nanorobots, uh, will be able to address every disease and aging process. So as we get to the 2030s, and certainly by the time the 2030s are over, uh, we'll have addressed virtually all disease and aging processes. And, and then you go on further to say that by the 2040s, we'll be able to, to, to tap our, our own human consciousness into the cloud, correct? One of the points I made is that technology is getting smaller and smaller at an exponential rate and increasing in price performance. So uh, 25 years from now, computers will be a billion times more powerful per dollar. They'll be 100,000 times smaller. They'll be the size of blood cells. They can go inside the brain and connect the neocortex to the cloud wirelessly. In other words, our brains converge with intelligent machines. The result, a colossal expansion of human intellect. What are, the, what are the advantages, from your perspective, of having this kind of superhuman intelligence? Intelligence is the only thing that enables us to solve problems. Uh, life expectancy was 19 a thousand years ago. Even just in recent years, a kid in Africa with a smartphone, which is uh, very ubiquitous today, can access all of human knowledge with a few keystrokes. Uh, she's walking around with a trillion dollars of computation and communication like circa 1970. And they're using that to solve real problems. We still have problems today in the world, and the only way we're gonna overcome disease and aging and poverty and environmental degradation is through greater intelligence. What do you say to people that are concerned when they hear that computers might, might in a very near future, trump human intelligence and, and develop consciousness? What do you say to, to assuage their concerns about a, a dystopian future? Technology is a double-edged sword. Fire kept us warm and cooked our food, but also burned down our houses, and every technology has had dual uses for creativity and uh, promoting our health, but also being destructive. These new technologies similarly can be destructive. We use technology to extend our reach, our physical reach, and then we leverage our muscles to create great structures, and today we can use these devices to access all of human knowledge, so we extend our reach physically and mentally with these technologies. That's what we're gonna principally do with AI, but they could also be dangerous. Already AI is used in warfare, for example. You think the future looks bright? I think you have to be an optimist to be an entrepreneur. If you knew of all the problems that you'd face in a project, you'd probably never start anything. Uh, but I've also written extensively about how these technologies can be dangerous and abused, and how what we need to do to keep them safe and I think that's actually the biggest challenge for humanity in the 21st century. How do we reap the promise of, a, of artificial intelligence and biotechnology and so on while controlling the peril? And I think we can do it, but not if we don't pay attention to the problem. Ray Kurzweil, thanks very much for making the time. My pleasure.